you can't believe the year we've had. We've had floods, we've had fires, we've had cyclones. And during the Saroja event, we were joking and saying, what is it going to be next, an earthquake? The one thing about Western Power employees is they are very community-minded. Uh, it is about the customer. It was a great demonstration of how we can actually mobilise these units and use them in disaster response. We had multiple bushfires at the beginning of this year, uh, starting in the northern area, uh, through York and various other locations. Uh, I think we had about six in total fires going on across the North Country area. Uh, so it was a significant amount and a, a really bad start to the year uh, in terms of bushfires. Waterloo was the, the biggest and baddest fire I think we've had in quite some time. It quickly progressed into, uh, into the metro area. During that fire there was 574 poles damaged including conductors, multiple teams were uh, involved in that response from South Country, uh, metro area. So it was a significant response to the, the size of the fire, very devastating. And then we moved on to uh, flooding in Northam, which was a substantial flood where the main street in Northam was flooded and it was uh, a really a freak flood that came through, uh, which required some special planning for us to respond to our customers' needs at that time. So the next thing was the cyclone. Obviously we had the, uh, the cyclone go through and the aftermath of the, the amount of damage that was realised at that point uh, was bigger than what we, we ever had seen before. Probably one of the biggest storms I've ever been involved in. In terms of preparedness for bushfires and storms, we prepare in a different way, different resources we assemble. Uh, it's difficult to make an estimation of how big, especially in a storm event, is going to, going to land. Uh, many times we have uh, some major warnings from bomb uh, about major storms coming through and they never really eventuate so it's always one of those ones where we need to try and calculate that we do need an X amount of staff to respond but there was a bit of preparedness that was involved with myself before the start of the cycle organising generators uh, to go up to Geraldton Depot, uh, the required staff to operate them and connect them. Uh, and accommodation was one of the big things as well because in these type of events you're competing against other emergency agencies to uh, try and accommodate our staff. I guess we learn from previous experiences, we learn from previous events. Unfortunately we do have these events that do happen. The only positive we can take out of it is to learn from it and what we can do better next time, how we, how we can prepare, what plans we can put in place. So I think the key really is before everybody wants to get to the area to fix it is to sit down around a table and look at what we're dealing with, what is the fire scar, how many assets are in there, have they been scoped yet, who do we need, where do we need them from um, and have all that planning done before we actually deploy ourselves to the location. So we basically hired from Kalbari right through the scar and right through Geraldton towards Three Springs, Murrah and as far as Meriden, they impacted uh, our network. So it was a m massive response from all uh, Western Power personnel during that time in the response phase. Never seen as many calls come through the desk uh, and being dispatched at that point. That was our main focus at the start, uh, as it always is, and it's the same with bushfires. In the initial response phase, it's all about safety, public safety, working with the local emergency agencies to make sure that uh, the area is safe for them because you've got a lot of low hanging wires and you've got to make sure they're not energised, etc. So there's a lot of work goes on through the control room and the faultmen in the field. Part of the response also is about making sure the fire brigade's got enough water to fight the fire. So we need to identify the crit critical infrastructure to make sure that they know you need to protect that piece of line. There's a major pumping station for water there. It will affect you if you lose that, which they can prioritise resources on that to make sure they've got a, a priority water supply to fight the fire. That's the response stage, which we manifest through there till it gets to the point where the the fire's under control and we work with the agency up there to get the green light to be able to start sending the people to start scoping the fire ground and identifying the hazards and the repairs that are required. Then that switches over to a full response mode where we bring in a team of people like Jocelyn and other construction experts to start doing a plan of how we're going to repair it and how we're going to respond in terms of resources, materials, etc. So part of the pre-planning and the importance of sitting down around a table and working out what we need is the fact that we need to then deploy all of our people and materials to a location where we can access them easily. So we really went in 24 hours to having nowhere to liaising with a farmer, getting access to his property, getting an agreement to lease it off him for a period of time and setting out this depot 
on in a paddock uh, with everything that anyone could think of that you needed and, and literally overnight. It was amazing effort. So my priority um, was safety. Um, safety of everybody up there, that really was top of the list the whole time. There's no compromise on that whatsoever. So obviously there's electrical safety that we had to deal with. Um, there's also the risk of spot fires flaring up right through the time that we were there. Uh, the environmental conditions that we had to deal with were also quite challenging. We had high winds, we had no winds, we had humidity, we had rain, we had drizzle, we had mud, we had dust, we had anything that you can think of um, during that time, fluctuating weather like extreme hot and, and cool days and we're really there relying on the advice given from the emergency services in how where to manage ourselves during these days because it brings with it total fire bans because of the wind or total fire bans because of the heat which then can impede our ability to do our work. After safety to me was communication, uh, really effective communication. You've got so many key stakeholders up there with priorities that are different so it was a matter of being really open and honest about what was going well, what wasn't going so well, um, any barriers that we saw and having these conversations early in the piece to ensure that everyone was on the same page when we were on site because there were so many different people, so many different areas contributing to this massive effort. We would meet three times a day at the commencement of the recovery. In terms of being on top of it, uh, we were working through hazards and we probably had up to a thousand hazards on our, on our network screen at that point in time. And it's, it's really hard when you're maybe knocking 30 to 40 hazards off a day. It's almost like you're trudging wall and you're not getting anywhere. Uh, but we, we, I mean, within, within three weeks, we were starting to see daylight, we were starting to get through them, but we still had to make sure everything was safe out there. And it's like any utility business in the world, you never have enough resources when a big storm comes through. You're always, you know, you have to prioritise where the main hazards are and get them as quickly as you can. But yeah, look, after about three or four weeks, we started to get on top of them, the numbers were coming down which has allowed us to concentrate on re-energising re some of the community. I, th I think the, the natural disasters that Western Power's experienced in the last 12 months, say, have maybe awakened the business to, to the need to, to be more open to, uh, to improving the way we might uh, tradi have traditionally responded and reacted to these types of events. There is, a, there is a lot of technology, uh, a, lot of, a lot of science that's been available to support these types of processes, um, what, we, what we see now is that opportunity to, to bring technology together with our existing processes and, and, and the deep experience that our, that our field guys, our network operations guys have, bring that together in a way that allows us to start to improve the way, again, that we can, can react to, to future events. So following Saroja, we saw an opportunity to improve the uh, accuracy and reliability of data we had around the, the magnitude of damage uh, and, the, and the changes in the network that aren't always necessarily that easy to pick up by the human eye. LiDAR has been a, been a part of our um, asset management toolkit for quite a number of years now. Uh, Western Power commenced its LiDAR journey nearly 10 years ago now, but over the last five years we've certainly ramped up our use of the, the technology. LiDAR stands for Light, and, light uh, Detection and Ranging, and uh, we use LiDAR as a method to uh, observe, survey, measure uh, different features uh, that are on and built around our network. Uh, and we use a fixed wing aircraft uh, with, a, with a very uh, complex sensor system on it um, to, to capture a whole lot of detailed information about the exact location of each of our wires, um, things like the lean on our poles, distances to vegetation, uh, and also clearances between individual wires and buildings. When you start connecting people after such a significant event, it really picks them up, so you're providing essential services back to them in terms of even the corner shop. And funny enough, the pub's important in a, in a, in a country life uh, community. You know, when people go there, they have a lot of their town meetings in the pub and etc. But these things are really important, getting fuel back in the community as well. Uh, we had a lot of generators out on site that required fuel, so it was important that we got the key petrol stations back on, shops, etc. We've had to put in a significant amount of work to be able to respond to the natural disasters of 2021. Um, in particular, looking at how we can transform the network to what it needs to be in the future in response to those challenges that we've seen. We have got a, a 
certainly a better network uh, in, in the North Country area, right through there. We have replaced a significant amount of poles, uh, and that goes on the transmission side as well. Western Power has been using new technology such as standalone power systems where we can supply customers with a, an alternative to our traditional solution of poles and wires. Our standalone power systems, they comprise of uh, solar panels, uh, a battery energy storage system and a backup diesel generator. Uh, and each of our customers that are um, able to get one of those systems, they get that whole piece of kit on their land and that provides them with a really safe and quality electricity supply. Sorosia demonstrated for us the resilience of being able to use this new technology. So when the lines came down and we had our teams up there and we had hundreds and hundreds of our employees going out there and looking at the disaster, our team mobilised very quickly to look at how that we could redeploy the units that we had in the pipeline for our round two project into these disaster areas. So we went through and identified 37 customers um, that would be suitable for the project and then we started redeploying these units. We went and visited the customers to understand how they were using their power, would it be suitable, did they have enough land that would be suitable for the units um, and we did a cost of benefit analysis to prove that this is the right technology at the right time for these customers. It's been quite an experience for these customers having to go through the trauma of an event and it's probably the biggest event we've ever seen at Western Power and then going into this you know new technology where they're going to hopefully have 100% reliable power is really exciting. I would genuinely say hand on heart that these systems are the most resilient thing that we've got in the network, particularly in the regional areas. So we had six units that were up in Mullawa during the cyclone that retained power and they're the only customers that retained power during the event. So the units we've already got out there on the ground we know will perform really well under similar types of um, events. One of the things that the, uh, our people at Western Power do really, really well is when it comes to bushfires and storm response, they, they almost seem to lift another level. They, 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 they're very in the moment, they, they want to help the community, as we all do, that's, that's the kind of role we are in this job. We, you know, it's all about serving the community. Now these events will continue to happen at an increased frequency over time, given the, the state of change we're already seeing in our, in our climate, for example. So uh, I think it's great for Western Power now to, to start advancing uh, the application of more science in, uh, in supporting the way it operates and maintains the network over time. What did I learn from the year? Expect the unexpected. You can't believe the year we've had. It's accumulated to such an event. Uh, it was unbelievable. So uh, I think going forward, we do. We expect the unexpected and we're going to prepare more diligent going forward as well because we have to expect climate change, etc. Things are changing. We are getting more bushfires coming through and more network folks due to that. So it's uh, a lot more planning involved uh, to get it right. Look, I guess for uh, Western Power, we do a lot of our best work uh, in a crisis. Uh, and one of the things that we saw was the way that the organisation banded together to be able to bring back power to the communities that were affected by the cyclone. But alongside that, how we bring in innovation and new thinking to be able to deliver better energy solutions to our customers.